Matthew 5 verses 17 through 37. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia. The fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Concerning anger. Concerning divorce. Concerning adultery. Concerning swearing oaths. Jesus said to his disciples. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments, and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Rika, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar, go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while otherwise your, oppo your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed a lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have you have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife unless the marriage is unlawful causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black, no. Anything more is from the evil one. All you need to say is simply yes or no, anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Verse 17, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. God's laws were given to people to help them love God with their whole hearts and minds and their neighbors as themselves. Throughout Israel's history, however, these laws had often been misquoted and misapplied. By Jesus' time, religious leaders had turned the laws into a confusing bunch of rules. When Jesus talked about a new way to understand God's law, he was actually trying to bring people, bring people back to the law's original purpose. Jesus did not speak against the law itself but against the abuses and excesses to which it had been subjected. Do the Old Testament laws still apply? There were three categories of law, ceremonial, civil, and moral. The ceremonial law related specifically to, Israel, specifically to Israel's worship, see the book of Leviticus for examples. The primary purpose of ceremonial laws were to point to the coming Messiah, these laws, circumcision, Sacrificing animals etc. were no longer necessary after Jesus' sacrificial death and resurrection. While we are no longer bound by ceremonial law, the principles behind them to worship and love a holy God still apply. 2. The civil law applied to daily living in Israel, see Deuteronomy 24 verses 10 to 11, a pledge for a loan for example. Because modern society and culture are very different from those historical times, all of these civil guidelines not be followed. But the principles behind the laws are timeless and should guide our conduct. Jesus continually demonstrated these timeless principles by example. 3. The moral law, such as the Ten Commandments, is the direct command of God, and it requires strict obedience. 
The moral law reveals the will of God, reveals the will of God, and of course still applies today. Jesus always obeyed the moral law. Moses broke every one of them at once. When he threw them down, you cannot have workable laws for behavior without religion, because religion provides the base on which morality and truth are measured. When God is abandoned, God is abandoned. Truth is abandoned, and when truth is abandoned, the basis for morals and law are also abandoned. A consistent, logical legal system cannot be built on philosophical humanism, people first, or the principle that right and wrong come and go according to society's thoughts and feelings. The most upright citizens. At this point it is good to recall that God gave Israel ten laws, and the religious leaders added 603 man-made laws to God's law for a total of 613 laws. Jesus delivered an internal code, a code of love not fear. Jesus had come to give a fuller understanding of why God in the first place. Jesus taught that we should not even become angry enough to murder, for then we have already committed murder but in our heart. What Jesus prohibits is not murder, the Ten Commandments did that, but anger and the mere feeling of anger is liable to the court's judgment. Pharisees read this law and, not having, not having literally murdered anyone, felt that they had obeyed it. Yet they were angry enough with Jesus that they soon would plot his death. Murder is a terrible sin, but anger is also a great sin, because it also violates God's command to love. Anger in this case refers to a seething, brooding bitterness against someone is a dangerous emotion that always threatens to get out of control, leading to violence, emotional hurt, increased mental stress, and spiritual damage. Have you ever been proud that you didn't strike out or say what was really on your mind? Self-control is good, but Christ wants us to practice thought control as well. Jesus, well, Jesus said that we will be held accountable even for our attitudes. Matthew chapter 5 verses 23 and 24, Reconciliation. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go, first be reconci reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Broken relationships can hinder our relationship with God. If we have a problem or grievance with a friend, we should resolve the problem as soon as possible. We are hypocrites if we claim to love God while we hate others. Our attitudes toward others reflect our relationship with God. 1 John chapter 4 verse 20 If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, thus cannot love God whom he has not seen. Matthew chapter 5 verses 27 and 28, Adultery You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. The Old Testament law said that it is wrong for a person to have sexual relations with someone other than his or her spouse. But Jesus said that the desire to have sex with someone other than your spouse is mental adultery and thus sinful. Jesus emphasized that if the act is wrong, then so is the intention. To be faithful to your spouse with your body but not your mind is to break the trust so vital to a strong marriage. Jesus is condemning not natural interest in the opposite sex or even healthy sexes that would be evil if acted out is sinful. Once again, the Pharisees' teaching was concerned only with the outward act. They said the only way one could commit adultery was through an act of sexual union. They correctly quoted the commandment, but they missed its point. Adultery begins within one's heart looking lustfully, looking lustfully. Jesus' position is brief, the gaze of lustful desire is as guilty as the adulterous action. Gouge out your eye. Jesus didn't mean to literally gouge out your eye, because even a blind person can lust. But if that were the only choice, it would be better to go into heaven with one eye or one hand than to go to, or one hand than to go to hell with two. We sometimes allow sins in our life but forget that sin could eternally destroy us. But it is better to experience the pain of getting rid of a bad habit or treasure, than to allow the sin to bring us judgment and condemnation. Matthew chapter 5 verses 31 and 32. It was also, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, makes her an adulteress and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. 
Their statement of the law is a very loose paraphrase of Deuteronomy 24 verse 1, it omits the phrases that deal with the occasion of the divorce, if then she finds no favor in his eyes, or because he has found some indecency in her. Thus all divorces rest with the husband, none with the wife. Shammai and Hillel The meaning of this obscure phrase was extensively discussed by the rabbis. Rabbinical tradition t Rabbinical tradition tells of two views in New Testament times. The opinion of Shammai was that divorce was allowed but only for adultery, and the opinion of Hillel, was to allow divorce for the love of another woman or for other causes such as poor cooking. The law of Deuteronomy actually deals only in direct divorce. Its object is the prohibition of the reunion of partners after a divorce. We will discuss this issue further when we get to Matthew 19 verses 3 to 9. One needs to recognize that Deuteronomy is the second law and was written by Moses not by God. Matthew chapter 5 verses 33 to 37 Swearing Oaths Here, Jesus was emphasizing the importance of telling the truth. Keeping vows and promises are important, because they build trust and make dedicated human relationships possible. The Bible condemns making vows or taking oaths while knowing that you have no intent to keep them. Oaths are needed in certain situations because we live in a sinful society that breeds distrust.